Joining me right now here on the program, State Representative John Frula. Welcome back. Good morning, Chad. It's great to be back. Well, it's uh, good to have you back on the show. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, now we're uh, back here in Lubbock and the uh, legislative session is over. And you got to be a little bit happy about that. It is. We won't be uh, fully happy until we get past that veto period, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, everything that I have out there is safe. But, uh, no, you're exactly right. It's neat to get back and uh, be back in the community. And uh, Lubbock, with all this rain, is like an oasis. It's yeah. uh, unreal. And down there in the Ellen Henry area, I've never seen flowers. As, you know, they're waist high just forever. Mm-hmm. And six months ago, you look at it, and it was just brown dirt. So, uh uh, I like what you've done with the place. Yeah, it's it's been nice. Uh, as uh, we we've, we you know wanted to make things nice for all the returning lawmakers. There you go. <laughs> uh, we were discussing this before uh, before we came on the air about uh, you know we, we we see and this is the time of year that it always happens. Uh, those who decide not to go back uh, to, uh, to 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 their uh, uh, you know the position uh, down in the legislature, and you've had quite a few people who've. Uh, retired or just decided, okay, I'm going to get out of politics. I'm done with this uh, right now. Are you, are you surprised by the number of people? You know, not uh, not really. It's uh, and people, of course, uh, retire for a number of reasons. Uh, part of it is it's just uh, people don't realize what a grind it is, how hard, how much hard work it is, how constantly you're. Uh, working on things. And of course, that's what we get into it for. But at the end of the day, it is a lot of work. And uh, after doing it for so long, or, you know, uh, people, uh, you know, they they just want to get back to a, you know, what I would call a a normal life, a a life outside of the fishbowl. you know, th- there's that. Uh, in certain cases, they've accomplished what they wanted. Maybe it's certain legislation happening or keeping something from happening. It, it, it could be any number of things. Uh, sometimes it's family members. Sometimes it's health. Uh, Rick Hardcastle is a great example. He had MS and, uh, you know, still probably has MS. And uh, was that last session he served was in pretty bad shape and decided to retire. He didn't want to go back and uh, had a stem cell replacement. Uh, um, operation and uh, is now walking around, running around the Capitol, doing a great job. And he he says, you know, I, I wish I would have known it would be like this. Uh, I probably wouldn't have left. But in the, the shape that he was in, he, he left. And, you know, great guy. Uh, so people, uh, you know, any number of reasons. Uh, but, it, 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 you know, it is, it's always surprising. And uh, you have the institutional loss. But then you also have new minds coming up. So, it's yeah. uh, you know, it's an exciting time. For you, during this past legislative session, how, how do you think the session overall went? I, I think it was a great session. I think that we accomplished a lot of great items, uh, a lot of conservative items. Uh, you know, we did uh, – we, we passed camp, a version of campus carry, open carry, the budget uh, – was probably one of the most conservative and even more uh, truthful than the budget we passed last year, which when we were last session, when we passed that, I was talking about this is one of the best budgets as far as transparency that we have ever done. And this this session, it's even better. We're getting rid of those dedicated funds that we use to certify the budget at about a billion dollars a year, started out roughly at five, you know, probably now we're down to around three somewhere. So we're doing a great budget. The budget uh, leaves about $11 billion, that's $11 billion with a billion in the rainy day fund we've got about three billion that we didn't spend which uh, you know i'm hoping we don't spend some of that depends on what happens with school finance as we go forward uh we funded the growth in education roughly eighty thousand kids coming into the education system added a 1.5 billion dollars to it uh you know just just overall uh, i'm i'm proud of some of the, the, the bills that i passed uh, uh one that uh, is getting an unbelievable amount of play is a knife bill that was brought to me by uh you know a good friend of mine um uh, Charles Peake, his son, you know, of course, and Charles, uh, many of us probably don't know that name, but we know that the product that he sells, he owns a company called uh, Red Apple, mm-hmm. and they sell all those little uh, uh, cookies that you bake in your oven that you buy from school kids. So, but he, he has a son that was involved with knives, and he said, we need to get rid of this uh, all these little knife laws in municipalities, counties that they set up where you can't have knives. And, um, it, it's such a deal that you can have a life, uh, knife that's legal in Austin. 
and is illegal both in San Antonio and in Corpus. You can have knives that are illegal in Corpus, uh, that are legal in Corpus, illegal in San Antonio, and vice versa. And so it was just, you know, we were creating, uh, in some cases, felons out of people who happen to be carrying a pocket knife they've had in their pocket for 20 years. So, yeah. uh, you know, there are people just all, usually we don't, you know, when we do something, people either uh, say, well, this is how you should have done it. In this case, I'm getting a lot of uh, phone calls and emails and uh, letters and just people on the street thanking me um, in some cases for not, you know, they didn't even realize they were com- uh, breaking the law by being in a certain town with a knife. Right. And, uh, and then you, you, you go through that. That whole process, and so you know that that was one of the neat things that we did, kind of a good red meat item, but but still, I mean, who uh, you know, all of us carry pocket knives. A lot of us used to carry them a lot more frequently, but you know, as you travel, you can't have a pocket knife, and so you tend not to have one. But you know, so so from that standpoint, there were some personal things that I did that was really uh, uh, rewarding. I think out here in uh, West Texas, we all got together. You know, of course, we had a, a, a new senator and a new uh, state rep, and uh, myself, and of course, uh, some of the other state reps in the area were uh, you know are fairly new. You got Ken King, that's uh, uh, you know, f- uh, through his first term. And so, you know, we worked well together. We got a lot of things done. You could look at tech and a lot of uh, uh, great things happening at tech, We're positioning them to grow and, and um, you know, educate our kids and, you know, trying to keep that affordable. So, uh, you know, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. And the best thing is we got it done in, the uh, you know, normal innings. We didn't have yeah. to go into extra innings. You know, last session we were down there till August. Uh, it's kind of nice to sort of get freed up. And, uh, you know, that way the people don't have to worry about what we're doing down there. Well, even on the last day, it, it was, you know, if I remember right, y'all got to there pretty early on the, on the final day. It was like, okay, we're done. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Yeah, it was right around uh, a little after the noon hour. We yeah. were uh, all wrapped up and done, and uh, it, it beats what happened uh, two years ago, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Visiting with State Representative John Frulo. Let's go ahead and take the break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation. Uh, we've got a lot more to get into, uh, and, of course, uh, we will talk about uh, one of the um, uh, one of the most talked about bills, uh, Campus Carry. We'll talk about uh, that as well when we come back. Chad AC Show News Talk, 790 KFYM. In studio, State Representative John Frulo. We are uh, getting his thoughts on this past legislative session, uh, one that uh, he has called a success, uh, that it was a uh, good conservative uh, legislation or uh, legislative session. I- I've asked the governor this. I've asked the lieutenant governor this. I'll ask you the same thing. Uh, any disappointments uh, from this session? Anything you're disappointed that did not pass? I think that uh, one of the bills that I had that um – you know, we, we it, it went through the insurance committee. It had to do with reinsurance. And it was, uh, you know, it wasn't one of those critical bills, but it's one of those bills that makes sense. The nation's going that way. Uh, we're trending that way. There's some talk of the federal government forcing us into the situation, but it's on the, the – uh, evaluation of reinsurance companies and I don't want to get into the details because it kind of gets pretty boring unless you're into into that type of stuff but it, it came through the committee I chaired we uh, uh, went through it passed it out of committee uh, unanimously I believe uh, went on and it, it sort of died in calendars on the Senate side I'm not even sure it even got a committee hearing um, but it's one of those things that I, I think eventually we will need to do but th- you know there was some um, well uh, planned opposition to it by just one company. Most of the companies wanted it, and that was one of those things that probably you know should have pushed a little harder. I think overall it would have been better for the state, better for customers in the state. But you know at the end of the day that didn't uh, work out. Um, you know, there's a few other things that you'd like to, to tweak about it, but I, I think overall, as with everything, you know, including the budget, uh, you know, there, there's some give and take, but uh, I was pretty happy w- with the session. Let me ask you about open, or campus carry, okay. because this is something that uh, I, I still get a lot of questions on. How is campus carry going to work? How is this going to work on college campuses? When this version was passed, that certain that, that colleges would be able to ban – uh, handguns in certain areas. What do you envision that looking like, let's say, over at Texas Tech? Well, let, let, let's go back, and what we need to do is back up 
a little bit and kind of, uh, or as I say on the, as a speaker will uh, say, backup members. And what we need to do is remember that night that that bill passed, and it was late into the night. We still had roughly 100 amendments, and we had maybe a half an hour to go. Right. And at that point, it what most likely was going to happen is the clock would have run out and nothing would have happened. Yeah. Okay, so it, with that frame of thought, this came up to give uh, the uh, universities some leeway in what they want. And, and in speaking with Tech, and of course, uh, Chancellor Duncan, their concern was that in certain restricted areas where they get monies from different areas, they may not want guns in there or one of the rules uh, or restrictions in that money may be that they would not give money grant money however they uh, you know are sending the money to the university if there are guns or that type of activity in that area so that was a concern of theirs and something that we were trying to figure out how to work between the universities the nra the gun rights and i'm a big gun proponent i mean um you know, I love the Second Amendment, right? And you know that. You've, you've heard me talk about it. So we're trying to figure out how to make all of that work. The, this amendment came up, and it, what it did is it gives some leeway to the university to figure out how it works. And to answer your question, we're not quite sure what will happen, how it will all play out. I think what it's going to take is the universities acting in good faith, and it, it goes through a review process, and so that's set up. So if they're not, uh, you know, there's always the next session, the 85th legislative session, where something more strict could come in. I think that uh, in uh, what I've uh, heard, and I don't want to speak for uh, Chancellor Duncan, but they're looking now at dorms and then, of course, these restricted areas that we talk about. The restricted areas, I... um, you know, I agree that uh, there's something that needs to be done on that and work on that. And, of course, the NRA did approve this amendment. They were happy with the amendment. They, uh, yeah, to use the uh, terms of Alan Fletcher, of course, it was his bill. Uh, he carried it in the House. Birdwell, of course, uh, carried the Senate bill, SB 11, uh, for the campus carry. But uh, they said, we don't consider it a home run, but we do consider it a triple and so I, th- I think that's pretty good, and, and you've been around politics long enough to know that a lot of times you're just incrementally inching towards what you ultimately want. And I think with, with that, campus carry and even open carry was a great success this time. So we'll we'll see how everybody plays, how it works out. Uh, you know, the dorms, I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on that. I, I still believe people need to uh, be able to protect themselves wherever they are. So I'm not a fan of that part of it. So, you know, we'll just see how it works out, what the reaction is. And, uh, you know, but I, I think it is a good first step and it's a major step it, I, I like the idea of it being a triple you, you brought up uh, the, this the review committee uh, I, I guess it, does this mean that universities have to submit their plan to this committee and and Who's on the committee, or has that even been developed yet? You know, I'm I'm not quite sure. Some of that has been worked out, but it'll be a a review committee at the legislative uh, uh, level, and then also what the universities, you know, the trustees, I believe, uh, put together. And so we'll just see how it works out. At the end uh, end of the day, I want to see the results. What do they come up with? And, of course, they can't do an entire campus uh, item. So, you know, if we start getting into classrooms, and, uh, of course, we already have parking lots where you can have your gun right now. Uh, where, you know, that's that's where it'll be. And I'm sure that some universities will be uh, a, a lot more receptive to campus carry than others. You know, um, right. UT did not want it at all. So, uh, you know, with... Uh, uh, you know, we'll just see where it all works out. But uh, I'm sure that there will be some uh, tweaking and work done next session. I, I think it'll be interesting to find out just how many grants a university gets from the federal level that actually even has that language in there, you know, not to have firearms uh, around. Because that's, you know, that's something that, you know, regular people probably, you know, they're not going to know what's inside a grant that a university gets. Right. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how that language is actually spelled out and how many grants actually uh, have that in there? Yep, I don't know, or private grants. Yeah. Uh, you know, who knows? And just because of the fact that uh, uh, you know we're shining a spotlight on it, we're going that direction in Texas right now. That may be added to them. Who uh, you know? It, it who knows? Yeah, visiting with the state representative John Frulo. I want to ask you about criticism, uh, and and every lawmaker gets gets criticism. Every legislative session is criticized. Uh, it seems because not everyone gets what they want. Uh, it's one of those where the, the the session is designed to kill most legislation, and thankfully, I think most of the time, it does that. It, it kills all the bad bills that are out there, or at least most of the bad bills that are out there. 
but those there are some who say uh, that that leadership prevented a lot of good bills from moving forward. That uh, leadership in the House prevented. Uh, major legislation moving forward. How do you respond to some of that criticism that's out there? Well, I, I think that uh, it, it's uh, probably, to, you know, a lot of it depends on the person themselves. There, there are, and again, you've seen this, there are a lot of people that are single-issue people, and they only care about one issue, and everything else could be falling apart, but as long as their one issue is taken care of, they're happy, or if their one issue is not, then it, it was a, a failure, a terrible session. I think overall, and that's what we need to do, is look at what we accomplished. We've got a great budget. We've got a conservative budget, one of the most conservative and transparent budgets we've ever had. We, we passed some more abortion laws this time. We've got some of the best gun uh, legislation that we've passed since probably uh, concealed carry was originally passed. Um, You look at what we did for roads. You look at what we did for education, both public education and higher education, what we did for mental health. As you go through and you look at those different items, you you say, I I don't know how people can't overall be pretty uh, uh, excited about what we did. The money we've got left over, I mentioned this earlier, $3 billion uh, that we didn't use in the budget. And I'm one of the the people that believe that we should spend what we need to, not what we have, and, and let the, you know, let's do something. Thing unique, like let the people that paid the money in keep the money. Uh, so, so we've got that. I, I think overall that uh, uh, you know I'd want to see what they were unhappy about. You know, there's always something to be you know probably unhappy about something you wish you could have got a little bit more. But uh, at the end of the day, there's uh, you know 181 people down there, 31 in the Senate, 150 in the House, and and there are competing differences. Earlier, you mentioned working with other West Texas lawmakers and other area lawmakers. How often did y'all meet and and how often did y'all work together? Because that's something that's it's not seen by a lot of people. Well, you know, it's, uh, I mean, having like a formal meeting and that type of stuff, we, we typically don't do that, but we talk together. Uh, you know, I'm sitting uh, one seat in front of uh, Ken King. Dustin Burroughs is sitting across the aisle, uh, the walkway aisle, not uh, <laughs> not the political aisle, to my left. Uh, I've got four Price that's sitting uh, two desks in front of me off to the right. So there, there's a bunch of us that are, you know, kind of huddled up together together right there. Um, we get together, we talk, we, uh, you know, work, work things out, especially when big issues come up. Uh, you know, right now, Dustin Charles and myself are getting ready to uh, have a meeting to uh, talk over some issues that are coming up to say, okay, this is where we, uh, here's the issues, here how it's, here's how it's going to play out. And, uh, you know, just just start looking at that and setting things up. So I, I think it's uh, the thing that we're able to do with such small numbers is get together, form a consensus, and then go forward. State Representative John Frulo, appreciate your time today. You bet.